Dylan Redwine was a 14-year-old boy, his mother, Elaine Hatfield Hall, and his older brother Corey lived in Colorado Springs. Dylan was like many young boys with age. He loved hanging out with his friends, playing baseball, and other sports. Dylan greatly admired his older brother Corey. They were very close. During Thanksgiving break 2012, Dylan was planning to visit his dad in Bayfield. In fact, the visit was court ordered. Dylan's mom Alan and dad Mark are fighting for custody after a recent divorce. Mark's home was secluded and isolated at the time, with few activities for a 13 year old white kid taking insulin, so it didn't make sense for Dylan to fly in. Additionally, his father, a long haul truck driver, hadn't been around much. Despite Dylan's reluctance to go and his mom's aversion to sending him, Dylan attended. However, the visit was court ordered, so Elaine sent Dylan on a flight from Colorado Springs Bayfield. Since it was about a six hour drive to establish, Upon landing in Durango La Plata that evening, he was spotted walking off the plane at 5.46 p.m. Brown shirt, black basketball shorts, Nike Air Jordans, blue duffel sports baseball hat with a bluebill. Dylan was caught on camera at 7.05, buying stacks for the house at Walmart with his father. Mark's mom texted him at 7.06 p.m., asking if he had been picked up from the airport. Dylan replied yes with a sad face. At 7.22 p.m., Mark and Dylan went to McDonald's for food. 9.37 p.m. that night was the time he returned home. The next day, November 19, Dylan sent his last text message. Dylan's dad awakes at 6 a.m. and says he has to run the payroll for his office. Around 7, Mark tried waking Dylan up on the couch, but he refused. He told Dylan he was running errands and would be back around 11 a.m. He says he arrives home around 11.30 a.m. and enters his house. Nick is watching a Nickelodeon cartoon. There is no sign of Dylan in the house. However, an item that belongs to Dylan is missing from home and his blocking great backpack. Dylan also has a sturdy cereal bowl by the sink. Dylan might have gone to the local river to fish over the local bridge or a campground during Mark's walk. A little while later, Mark took a nap. Upon waking, Mark notices Dylan has not returned home, so he contacts one of Dylan's friends in the area. Dylan had not called or texted Tristan all day. This is highly unusual for Dylan, Mark said. So Dylan will be officially searched for. About 2.30 or 3 p.m. that afternoon, Mark searched near his home. He reports his son missing directly to the local marshal's office. Dylan's mother was also texted to ask if she had heard from Dylan or knew where he was. Alien immediately freaks out after not hearing from her son since the previous night. She was about six o'clock hours away in Colorado Springs. She instantly called Mark to try to find out more details about what's going on. Elaine says he doesn't answer any of her calls. The police arrived at Mark's house and began searching for Dylan. However, police find no trace of Dylan. Since Bayfield is a very secluded area, they find this very unusual. It was getting colder outside, and Dylan didn't have a winter coat. As the search for Dylan progressed, more and more police officers joined the search. The search for Dylan was halted after a powerful Colorado snowstorm hit. Days later, the search resumed with low morale since Dylan was yet to be found, and the weather was not favorable for survival. In case someone gets lost in the woods. Mark Redwine hired a lawyer two weeks after Dylan disappeared. No updates after following. Three months later, Mark, Elaine, and Dylan's brother Corey will appear on Dr. Phil. Mark's mother confronts him on the show and claims she tracked him all the way to the Dr. Phil show so that he would talk to her about Dylan. After Dylan went missing, her number was blocked, and she has not been able to contact him. He agrees it's bizarre. They are not talking and trying to find their missing son together. Then Elaine confronts Mark on the show and says, I don't trust you, and I'm concerned that you heard him and left his bones out there. You don't even care. Also, she said she would have more concern over her lost dog than Mark had over his lost child. She confirmed that Dylan did not watch Nickelodeon cartoons. He watched MTV instead. Moreover, Dylan was not a big fisher, 
and he didn't even know how to thread. If Dylan were just going to a friend's house, he wouldn't take all his stuff in his backpack. And that the backpack should have stayed with Mark. Dylan's older brother Corey, who was also Mark's biological son, seems to dislike him. He had some connection to Dylan's disappearance. Mark is confronted that he didn't attend any of Dylan's benefits the birthday vigil, the fundraisers, the Find Missing Dylan Red Wine Fund. Also, he confirms that Mark did not contribute money to help find Dylan. To assist in ground searches. Dr. Phil then asks Mark if he's interested in finding his missing son or fighting with his ex-wife. He hasn't said a word about his missing son since he went on the show. Mark has also had a polygraph taken. Later, the police say that it has been inconclusive because the examiner is unqualified to perform it. Dr. Phil offers to have a retired FBI public referred tractor minister perform the polygraph to help Mark clear his name. Initially, Mark says he'll take the polygraph, but then he pushes it off. Eventually, he says he doesn't feel well enough and disqualifies himself from the test, and cannot complete and be on the show the next day. Dylan's fate is also discussed. Mark believes Dylan had a friend who lived on the lake up the road. Maybe Dylan tried to walk there. However, Elaine immediately replies that Mark lives six miles from the lake. There is no way to limit the distance walked. A stranger may have abducted his son when he hitchhiked in the area. In addition, he believes it is not impossible that Dylan's mom, with the assistance of some unsavory friends she still knows, could be to blame for Dylan's disappearance. Mark asks if he really believes such outlandish theories and says he does, but he has no evidence. This was four months after the Dr. Phil episode and seven months after Dylan vanished. Dylan Redwine's remains were found 10 miles from his father's house, near an ATV trail that closes for the winter. The Colorado Bureau of F.B.I could look down and see Mark's house far off in the distance from where Dylan's partial remains were recovered. Elaine filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Mark in 2014, but a judge dismissed it, stating she missed it. This made Mark really upset, as he had been looking forward to the chance to face his ex-wife in court. Hikers who walked near the same ATV trail in 2015. Locating Dylan's remains. As more people suspected that Mark had something to do with Dylan's stuff. Mark suggested Dylan survived because he was lost in the woods with no food or water due to exposure to the elements. Dylan's body probably had post-mortem and work from wild animals around. Yet experts found no known animal capable of transporting a party in this location so far from Mark's house. Also, investigators found two markings consistent with knife wounds on the Haskell. Most likely, he died of blunt force trauma. This wound, argued a forensic anthropologist, could not have been made by an animal in the area. They appeared to be perimortem indicating that they are most likely not cost after Dylan was already deceased finally in 2017. Mark Redwine was arrested in Bellingham, Washington, on second-degree murder, child abuse. Let's put him down, lay him down, and we'll move up. Uh, Nick, Bean, and Dolly Wall grab him. But let's uh, put him on the ground, stomach, arms out. Bean and Nick, when we're moving up, I'll cover the uh, cap. There's a passenger, there's a passenger. Just keep your hands up, buddy. Just keep your hands up. Dolly Wall, watch the cab. I got the cab. Around me, go around back. Yep. I got the cab. Around me, go around back. Yep. Just keep your hands up. Don't move, bud, okay? I'm good. Do not move. I'm good. Drop a cigarette. Yeah. When you guys can, you'll explain to me what's going on? Yes, sir. Is your name Mark? Yes, it is.
he's detained. Mark is detained. Mark, do you have any weapons on you, sir? No, sir, I do not. Rolling my way? Yeah. Just gotta check you, okay, Mark? I'm fine. Okay. okay. Rolling that way. Yeah. You gotta check that side? Yeah. Here's my wallet in that pocket. Just the wallet. Alright. You're gonna turn towards me and sit on your thumb, alright? He was held for $1 million bail and extradited to Colorado. A lawsuit was also ongoing at the time of Mark's arrest. He filed a complaint against his mentor for intentional infliction of emotional distress. Elaine spearheaded Senate Bill 34 in Colorado, which increased the punishment for tampering with a corpse or evidence of homicide to a Class 3 felony. Colorado has a minimal penalty for lobbying costs. Those convicted now face up to 12 years in prison as soon as partial remains were discovered on 6-27-2013. Brandon Redwine, Dylan's other child from a previous marriage, reported a strange conversation with his dad. Mark mentioned one forced trauma multiple times and how investigators would need to find the rest of the body. His previous ex-wife Betty Harbach told investigators that she initially was worried about him. Before their marriage, she told him he knew how to hide bodies. It would dispose of it in the mountains where no one could find it. Moreover, the case sheds light on the disturbing photos of Mark. Mark's let his children use his laptop, and he apparently kept inappropriate, grotesque pictures, and Dylan eventually came across them. The pictures include cross dressing, makeup, and diapers. Mark is also shown handling and possibly eating human waste. Dylan showed these photos to his brother Corey who was very upset and embarrassed to see their father in some of these situations. Dylan might have confronted his father about these photos, as alleged in the indictment. On the evening of November 18, 2012, the indictment states, Fillings and two friends were missing who were on Mark's property. Look for talent post of these photos, and Mark legibly reacted violently. He raised a log over his head and presented it like he would attack them with it until they jumped in their car and drove off. According to the prosecution, Dylan was killed after Mark became enraged when Dylan confronted him about the photos. Dylan's texts from the night of the alleged murder indicate that he did not want to stay home alone with Mark. The request to stay at a friend's house was denied by Mark. Dylan and his friends planned to meet early the next morning at 6.30 a.m and his phone last known phone activity by Dylan was at 9.37 p.m. On the evening of November 18, 2012 went on to not arrive at his friend's house early the next morning. His friend sent a text message at 6.46 a.m. that said, Where are you? but received no response after Dylan was reported missing after no sign of him or his belongings showed up. On the searches, cadaver dogs were brought in to help locate Dylan. On the 8th of May, 2013, a search dog named Molly trained only to indicate human remains. On various locations in Mark's house, Molly had on the living room, the washing machine, and clothes that Mark had reported wearing on 11 18 20. Traces of Dylan's blood were also found in Mark's living room and the bed of his truck. Dylan's mom states that Mark has always had a blame shifting personality to others with accountability. She said that he has always been the type of person who hates to lose. She said that Mark and attentive to Dylan since he was a young child and that she would actually have neighbours call her while she was at work when Mark was supposed to be watching Dylan, who actually left him but instead left him unsupervised in the front yard. Dylan's older brother said we didn't know what the outcome would be, but we've always known that Mark has been involved in Dylan's disappearance in some way. Following the indictment and Mark's, the trial has been postponed four times. So far, the trial was originally delayed on 11 2018 so the judge could rule on the pre-trial motion. Then again, on 9 2019 when Mark's attorney Jason Moran was arrested for domestic violence charges after he assaulted his wife. On 4 2020, the trial, of course, was postponed again due to COVID. And recently, on 11 2020, the judge ordered a mistrial after Mark's defense attorney exhibited symptoms of COVID and broke quarantine restrictions. From these postponements, 
we've learned that early defence strategy has been to outline possible alternative suspects in the murder of Dylan as we wait for the trial to be rescheduled. Mark seems to have a fair number of supporters online that seem to argue that he's wrongfully charged. Many of them claim that the cadaver dog evidence is faulty since it took place a year after Dylan's disappearance. Others argue that there is a possibility Dylan was killed accidentally by a hunter in the area who then hid his body to avoid any kind of legal trouble. In my humble opinion, Mark Redwine unlawfully and knowingly causes the death of Dylan Redwine. What is your opinion? Thanks for watching.